Okay, so um, we're at the point where we have fully processed our two gigahertz data. And uh, now is the time to start thinking about some how we want to export it, basically, what information we care about for the export options. They're primarily going to be on the road scan tab in this export section. All of these are also available elsewhere in Radan, but they're probably just the easiest to access here in this export tab. I would say the most common export option for road scan data is CSV file. This allows you to do the math to figure out your layer thickness, because right now, if you think about it, we're annotating the bottom of layer one and the bottom of layer two. To, to figure out how thick that layer is, you'll have to take the layer two depths and subtract the layer one depths to get in between those because what we're recording is depth below surface. So all of these green picks are the, are the depth below our zero surface to this point. So we can go ahead and hit the CSV file button over here. That's going to allow us to either use an existing format. Um, there are some templates that GSSI has built into here. So that's an option. If I go to use existing and hit next, I can go into the GSSI folder and the road scan folder and select layer one and two depths. The only output fields that this gives me is the distance, which is the number along our horizontal axis here. So how far had the vehicle traveled? The layer one depth and the layer two depth. This is not including latitude and longitude or any kind of location information other than the distance recorded by the survey wheel. So most likely this is not going to suffice in terms of what you want for your output, but it is there as a pre-configured option. And I got here by hitting use existing, going to next, the GSSI folder, and then the road scan folder. If you have already created some custom configurations, those can be found in this custom folder. So these are all of the configurations I've created. If you click on any of them, it shows you what fields are going to be exported there. But for our purposes today, I'm going to um, build a new one by selecting Create Custom. You can see Use Most Recent is also an option, and it will just pull up whatever the most recent export configuration you had was, or you can modify existing which means you're selecting one that exists and then changing certain fields. But we'll create custom today. I'm going to hit next. You take this drop down and select waypoints, targets, and layers. And then we have all of these categories we can pick from. In the file category, there's start scan, and end scan, and file name. So if you plan to compile multiple files worth of data into one Excel document, you might want the file name in there just so you can keep it straight of where you were and what specific area that file's from. For waypoints, I usually like to include distance, which is the distance along the profile here, the latitude, and the longitude. And I'm just clicking any field that I want to add and then hitting this add button and it's putting it into the output fields section here. And then when it comes to layers, I'm going to open this up for layer one. I want my depth. Sometimes people also like to put in things like amplitude or dielectric or anything like that. You can pick any of these fields you'd like. For bridge scan applications, you're going to want to pick amplitude for sure for your picks. Um, those will be in the target pick area, though, rather than in the layers, which is right here. So for bridge scan, you'd want to pick the amplitude value in target picks. And in the handout, I'll send you that goes through all of that. Okay, so we did layer one. We picked the depth field. I'm going to go for layer two. Let's also pick the depth field. And that should be pretty good for us. So I'm going to hit next. Here you have the ability to filter your data. If I select yes, you can see the filtering window. It's sort of like if and and or statements. So if the distance is less than five or something, you know, you can say to include it or not include it. So that's what filtering is. I usually don't filter. So I'm going to hit no filtering, hit next. And then it's asking what you want to name this configuration. So I might call this webinar and hit finish. Now it's actually exporting my data using that configuration. So it's asking what I want to call my file. So I'm just going to name it something and hit save. So now my data is exported. I'm going to go to my folder on my computer. I see my CSV here. CSV, 
create custom when it points targets the layers. Let's try scan distance. And we are doing layer one and layer two. Layer one is the yellow. Okay, so layer one and layer three because I reclassified there. Distance, black, long, you can insert things like the scan number, layers, layer one, depth, and layer three, depth. We have our distance along our profile, our latitude, our longitude, the X location, and these are cut off. You can change like the number of decim decimals you're seeing in Excel and it should fill in that whole value. Obviously it's not helpful if you only have the first two numbers, they're all the same, um, or first two decimal places rather. Scan number, and then we have our layer one depth and our layer three depth, and you can do whatever math you need to do to figure out the thickness. So you would do this layer three number minus the layer one number to figure out the thickness of that second layer. For layer one, this is a measurement of, of ground surface to the base of the layer. So this actual number is our layer one thickness. Layer two, you have to do the math between uh, this number and the corresponding layer one number. So you could just run some Excel formulas to figure that out. So that's our CSV export. Since this was collected using GPS, we can also do a Google Earth export. If you open the location view right here on the left above the depth pane button, we can see the track that we actually took when collecting the system. It's a pretty straight line because it was a straight highway. If it had been snaking, it would be reflected here. But we can use this KML file option to export our data which is gonna bring up these options when we click it. So it's asking what you want to include in your export. GPS track is just the travel path. User mark is any of those vertical marks that are in the data, like there were around bridge decks here. Targets would be if you changed your pick type to target and just picked some individual object, like maybe there was a culvert or something that you cared about and you put a mark on it, um, that's targets. We don't have any of those, so I'm gonna take that off. Ground truth is gonna show you any cores that you included in the data. And then we'll want to check layers to output our layer information. The output parameter, we're gonna pick depth. You can pick other things like amplitude or time, which means the time depth. So how deep on the time scale that uh, reflection occurred. And then we have a minimum value and a maximum value. Right now, the maximum value is 12 inches. So if I'm looking along this profile and I notice there aren't really any points deeper than 12 inches, so zero to 12 should be fine. But let's say all of our picks occurred between like zero and five, you probably could narrow this down to be like six inches or something like that. So it's the window that you're looking at for your export values. So I'll leave it 12 for now. I can probably make it 10. And then number of intervals means just how many different breaks are there within that zero to 10 inches. If I have it set to five, that means the intervals are gonna be zero to two, two to four, four to six, six to eight, eight to 10. So that seems fine for this. And then you can view and edit layer colors. And then again, it'll show you where those breakdowns are. So you can change these colors however you'd like. Red and pink are kind of close together. So I'm gonna make that that color green, hit OK, and then you can hit OK to export. Here it's asking you for a name, and the file type again is .kml, which is just a Google Earth file. So that should be saved now. I'm just going to navigate to that proc folder. I've got it right here. 
I have Google Earth downloaded on my computer, so I can just double click this and it opens. I have the desktop version. Um, you can open it using the online version too. The desktop version doesn't really take up a lot of space on your computer or anything, and it's free. So that's a good option if you don't have it. So it's loading on my other screen right now. I'll pull it over once it's loaded. So here's Google Earth. We can see all of our various user marks on here as these little push pins. Um, right now, everything looks white. That's because you can see exactly where they left from over here too, from that parking lot. Must have been setting up there and then stopped somewhere around this intersection. So right now it's all white because my GPS path is um, sitting on top. So on Google Earth, you have this left-hand panel where you can look a lot like GIS at your different uh, layers. So I'm just gonna turn off my GPS path by unchecking that box. And now I can see the different colors along my scan. I'm going to open, expand this layers area so I can see all my different layers. I know I don't have a layer two, so I'm gonna turn that off. Same with all the other layers. They shouldn't be pulling any data in, but I just like to have it unchecked as much as possible. So right now I have both layer one and layer three showing. Let's say I just wanted to look at the depth to uh, the base of layer one. So I'm gonna turn layer three off and now just my layer one depth data is showing. Anywhere where there's a gap, that just means we didn't place any points there in right and. So I can expand it to see the breakdown of what the different colors mean. So we only have um, zero to two and two to four inches here, just because nothing was deeper than that. So we can see anywhere where it's red, the thickness is between zero and two inches, anywhere it's teal, which there isn't much of, honestly, it was just at the start over there, it looks like, so he, a little bit here. Anywhere it's teal, um, it's between two and four inches. And then we see our ground truth point that we put in here. So that's where our core data that we entered ended up. And honestly, I bet that this section's blue just because the ground truth points pulled it deeper than, than the rest of the layer. So we see it kind of only blue around this ground truth point because I put in arbitrary values there. All right, so we looked at layer one. Let's take a look at layer three, which is layer two, just because I reclassified it. So now we can see our depths here. Zero to two is red still, two to four is teal. So we have mostly teal, some yellow, which is four to six. And then around where they first started, there's even some orange, which is six to eight, and green, which is eight to 10. And again, this is the depth to the base of this second, second layer. So in this case, we're not necessarily looking at thickness. We're looking at how deep the bottom of this layer is over time below ground surface. Layer one, where we're getting an actual layer thickness because it's ground surface to the base of the layer. Layer Once you get deeper than layer one, you're just looking to that depth until the base of the layer. All right, so this is Google Earth. Which again, if you just wanted to get a general idea of like the thickness of your first layer over an entire network, this is a really easy way to visualize that. If you have certain categories that you consider um, appropriate versus needs some kind of repairs or additional engineering consulting or something like that, this would be an easy way to kind of point that out. All right. Cool. I'm going to X this out. The last export you can do is an image export. If you hit image here, it'll only export what you're currently seeing on your screen for your file. If you want to get an image of the entire length of the file, you can go to the G button, export, custom image export. 
And that's going to bring up this pane here. You can choose between a JPEG and a PNG. And then for image window, we just want our line scan instead of all windows. So just what is the actual data here. And then for image size, if I select current window, it's just going to show what I'm currently seeing on my screen in the export. If I want the whole file, I can hit entire file here and hit OK. And then I can go and check that out here. So it's showing me the whole file there with my pics. Another important thing, when you're putting pics on your data, make sure that you're hitting save often. The pics are not something that will stay on the data if for some reason your radan crashed or something happened with your computer. If you haven't been hitting save, you will not keep these pics next time you open the file. So keep hitting save on the home tab or you can go to the G button, save or save as. So that's pretty much everything 